With the drastic increase in the Lake Michigan water level, areas all along the shoreline are at high risk of quite literally being washed away. Naturally, the lake's water level rises and falls every year, but this is not a normal rise. This is the highest the water has been since 1986, 34 years ago. It is 11 inches higher than it was last year, and 36 inches higher than the average for the month of April. It is expected to continue to rise into May as spring storms bring more rain to the Great Lakes. The result has been disastrous for these shoreline, shoreline communities. Roads, houses, and sewers are in danger of being washed out. Most residents have been forced to act fast in order to save their homes. These tactics include adding large stones, sandbags, and seawalls to combat this advance. Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb has directed state agencies to gather information on damages to support on declaring this an emergency. After looking at numerous areas along the shoreline, I have chosen Ogden Dunes, Indiana, Long Beach, Indiana, and Graham Beach, Michigan, along the south shoreline of Lake Michigan to focus in on. I chose these communities because they are some of the ones experiencing the most erosion troubles and are very active in trying to implement protective measures. These three communities are also all differ from one another in size, house distance relative to the water, and what is happening across the street from these homes. This is important because during a storm event, the water has to make its way into an inlet, and these communities lack the necessary stormwater system to slow down the water, collect it, and transport it back into Lake Michigan. From these three communities, I chose five houses to establish a base lot size, a distance to the shoreline, and existing conditions on the shoreline for these homes. Ogden Dunes is currently facing the hardest challenge as their seawalls are failing and they are receiving no help from the National Park Service or the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. These two agencies have recently opposed a permit from Ogden Dunes to allow for the addition of more stone reinforcement. Residents have sued the two entities in early March, accusing them of interfering with shoreline protection. Generally, Ogden Dunes lots are a lot slimmer and longer than the other two communities I chose, at 60 feet by 185 feet, and houses built an average of 65 feet from the shoreline. Long Beach differs in this by being a lot closer to the water's edge. On average, these homes are only built about 39 feet from the water, and they rely on a strong, large seawall to protect some of their homes. Long Beach also has the smallest lot depth of these three communities. The topography here is much different than in Ogden Dunes, as everything flows towards the lake, including the neighboring, pro neighboring properties across the street. This puts extra stress on the residents, as they have to deal with their stormwater management as well as off-site water coming onto their site. Grand Beach is a smaller community than the two, but the lots are, a lot, are much larger. These lots, on average, are 115 feet by 161 feet and have homes built 67 feet from the shoreline. These residents have the privilege of having a large, steep, natural buffer zone between them and the lake. This results in the users having steps down to, the, to a beach landing near the water and then a seawall for added protection. Seawalls provide great protection for the residents in these communities, but they are not so great for the envir environment and the natural movement of sand in the lake. The wave energy slams into these concrete and metal structures, causing it to be deflected downwards and sideways. The energy that is directed down scoops out the lake bottom, causing a scour. This causes habitats to be lost and the lake becoming deeper and deeper over time. A seawall also creates a hard barrier between the lake life and the shore. This can cause animals such as turtles who come up on the sand to lay their eggs to be cut off and are not able to reach it. Wave flanking is another serious problem caused by seawalls. When they are installed, they have to end somewhere along the shoreline. When the energy is directed sideways from a wave, it will increase and go around the edge of a seawall, putting extra pressure on that area and causing more erosion. This then causes a domino effect of seawall installations. Now at this time we cannot go around and tell everyone to remove their seawalls and to think of the environment and the additional problems they are causing. The water level is too high and their homes would be in even more trouble than they are now. When the water level eventually recedes though, we need to strongly encourage people to act while they can and prepare for the inevitable rise in water level at some point in the future. This is a problem that was brought to my attention by the owner of a drone company that I came in contact with through researching this problem. Brandon Clare of Timeless Aerial Photography goes out to these communities and flies his drone along the shoreline and makes YouTube videos to show communities, local governments, governments, and homeowners. What we can do now is educate people on the importance of planting plants that grow along the shore, shoreline naturally. This allows root systems to grow and strengthen the sandy soil. It cannot just stop at the shoreline, though. 
along the road and fr in the front of the houses, stormwater management must be better. Raiden Gardens are a perfect installation to brighten up a landscape as well as control and slow down the movement of water throughout the site. I have implemented both of these heavily into my designs. I did not want to get repetitive with these designs, so we created a scale with, hu with human use on one side and stabilization and protection on the other. Ogden Dunes was designed to be on the far right of the scale towards stabilization and protection. The tier system of concrete rain gardens towards the north end of the site allows rainwater to slowly travel to the lake as well as offer strong protection from wind and waves. A crushed stone path moves throughout the site from the front yard to the back, allowing for walks through densely planted native plants that provide nice flashes of color during spring, summer, and fall. A rain garden towards the road will allow filtration and cleaning of stormwater coming from off the site. The design for Long Beach fits in the middle of a scale between human use and protection. This design features slate steps and pathways leading out to a patio and fire pits surrounded by native plantings and grasses to help stabilize the soil near the seawall. The rain garden nears, near the road allows for quick collection of stormwater runoff. From here, it will travel towards the tiered rain gardens on both sides of the house. Eventually, the stormwater will evaporate or make its way slowly down to the lake. I chose Grand Beach to have the most human use design because it, of its significantly larger lot size than the others and the presence of its large natural barrier already. These features include a pool, a patio, and a pergola for relaxing on, on those sunny lake days. A stone path connects from the patio to the wood steps and to the front yard and allows for walks through colorful perennials and grasses. It provides a sense of escape from the hardscape areas surrounding the back of the home. At the shoreline, just beyond the first seawall, I have chosen to install natural beach grasses and large rocks to break down that wave energy and stabilize the sand. Although residents have to make quick decisions now to protect their homes, I hope that we all learn from this and act when the water levels return to normal in the coming years to provide an ecological and yet eye-pleasing solution for the residents and for the future of the Lake Michigan shoreline.